for, for, for that to happen? I think just focusing on the task at hand. I think, you know, focusing on this one game, um, you know, give everything you got, you know, to try to win. And um, I think we've done a good job of that in the past, you know, but um, this is a tough team we're playing. We know that, you know, second best record in the NBA, um, two all-stars, you know, great coaching Casey. So, you know, they're going to do everything they can to try to, you know, prolong this series. So we just got to focus for tonight and make sure we're razor sharp. Jason Lloyd, The Athletic. We talked to you off and on about Rodney and Jordan in the bottom of the bench and that, and, and you keep saying Rodney's got to be aggressive, he's got to be assertive. At what point, though, do you have to look at that and say you're not getting a lot out of that spot and make a change? Um, when it's time. I mean, you know, I talked to Rodney. Um, we had a good talk yesterday, and, you know, he understands what we expect from him. And, you know, it's been, a tough, it's been a tough circumstances, you know, as far as just, you know, the first round and now I'm playing now and, you know, getting spot minutes, you know, more than anything. So, um I think George's doing a good job of just playing hard, competing. I think last game he had two steals, three deflections. So um, that's all you can ask of him right now. One of the, I forget which, I think it's Jordan. Jordan, the other night said that, the other day, uh, said that his minutes are, are shorter now. Is that, is that just the nature of the beast of the playoffs, or is that because you're not getting out of that spot which you need, so you're getting somebody else back in there? It just seems like their, their time on the court is coming in shorter spurts. Yeah, I mean, that's what the playoffs are about, you know, and, um, if something we can go to that's, you know, we think is better, you know, we try to do that. But, you know, Jordan's been fine. You know, Rodney, he, you know, he could be better. He knows that. Just need him to be aggressive. But, um, you know, during the course of the playoffs, rotations are shorter and minutes are shorter. And when you say when it's time, you're, you're not there yet in no. terms of, okay. <clears throat> Ashley Bassock, Metro Networks. Ty, when you guys have maybe a win that's a bit more emotional, like game three that's on a buzzer beater, how do you as a coaching staff try to, you know, avoid a win hangover, I guess? Um, West the playoffs, you know, we can't afford to have a win hangover. You know, it's, it's tough to win every game, and um, every game is hard fought. So, you know, that game is behind us. It was a big win for us. But now we just got to focus on tonight in game four. Joe Varden, Cleveland.com. Back to Jordan just for a minute. Um, when the playoffs began, uh, you wanted to play Jose a little to, to get Jordan off the ball. And I'm not suggesting that he should play, but can you just take us through what has happened that that you've gone away from that and Jordan ha has the ball when he's with the Because center. he's been on the floor with Braun, so, you know, Braun's pretty much a point guard as well, so we've been using him with LeBron. Uh, Steve Simmons, Toronto Sun. Um, Stan Van Gundy's let go today in Detroit. There's oh, really? some um, oh, there's some talk that this could be Dwayne's last game with the Raptors. Uh, can you talk about the, um, the your profession and, and the difficulty of the uncertainty of it? <laughs> um, first of all, with Stan, you know, I had an opportunity to play with Stan. I mean, play under Stan um, my last year in the league and. Um, I always thought he's a great coach. Um, he does offense. He does defense. He can call out every play that a other opposing team is running. Um, he took Orlando Magic to the NBA Finals that year. We lost to the Lakers. But, I mean, he's an outstanding coach. And, you know, it's just <laughs> – I mean, it's just crazy to see that, you know, you let a, a great guy like Stan go. I mean, I know he's emotional because he's into the game. He loves the game that much. But, I mean, for us X's and O's and understanding – you know, different teams, different schemes, his players. I mean, he's one of the best as far as knowing the basketball game and what it takes. Um, as far as Dwayne Casey goes, I mean, that's absurd. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, to change a team who they said played ISO basketball to, you know, being top three, I guess, in offense and defense this year, um, second best record in the NBA. Like, it's just, I mean, I don't believe that one bit. I mean, it would be absurd to make a move like that. Steve Ashburn or NBA.com. I'm wondering, when it comes to substitutions, I'm wondering where you fall and where you think most coaches fall on the decision between riding a hot hand, a hot group of five guys, versus substituting back in a star at a certain point on the clock or because he's a star. You know, it's a tough situation. Um, I was in that predicament last year, I think, against Indiana. We were down 26 going into the fourth quarter. And um, Channing Fry, Kyle Korver, and our bench guys really had it going. And, you know, I didn't bring Kyrie and Kevin back, you know, in that game at all. We, we, we won the game. You know, we lost. I probably got killed. But, I mean, it's just, it's just a thin line. I mean, I mean, you know, everybody wants to make a story out of something. But, 
the, the fact of it is they were playing well. They were playing good, just like, you know, we were in Indiana. And it's hard to say, okay, well, we got to this point. Now two minutes left in the game, Kyrie and Kevin bring us home. Well, they've been sitting for, you know, 11 minutes of the other, you know, of the fourth quarter. So, I mean, it's a fine line. It's a tough decision, you know, and um, – it's just it's just tough, you know. Do you want to mess up the rhythm of the team that's playing well, and then you want to bring your star back, who hasn't played in you know 10, 11 minutes, you know, the fourth quarter, and say bring us home. So it's just you know it's a tough decision, you know, and um, you just got to go with your heart and what you believe in, and forget the outside noise. Some of us might say, well, you know, it's going to cause a rift with your star if you don't attend to his his game, and other people will say, well, you might upset a bunch of guys if you're disrupting a, a comeback? You just got to go with your heart and do what you feel. I mean, at the end of the day, um, they're going to do what they want to do anyway. So, you know, do what you feel and do it your way. And then if it don't work out, then let them make a decision. Steve Gordon, uh, the Columbus Dispatch. Just curious your thoughts on Jeff Green's play and what do you feel like's made him a, a greater factor this series than last I think Jeff, you know, I think he's doing a good job. I think, you know, JR and him are rotating guarding DeRozan, um, just giving DeRozan a different look, being athletic, you know, taller um, with size. But he's also made some big shots, making his three-point shot. I think he's um, he has an advantage against when they try to put fours on him or fives. He can catch and go and get to the basket, you know. So I just think his all-around game has been good. I think he's, you know, coming off the bench and, and really seeing what's going on. He's active on the bench, talking to guys, keeping guys engaged. So um, seeing a different part of Jeff than you usually see because he's really quiet and really doesn't talk a lot, but he's really engaged. Thanks. Marla Ryan, our Akron Beacon Journal. With all your respect for Stan, you know, he was trying to wear two hats. Is that hard to do in this even more than now, uh, ever before? I mean, I've only been coaching for two years, so I can't. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't know as far as doing both. I know it's a hard job. I mean, because my job is hard by itself. So if I had to, you know, do all the other stuff, it, you know, it would probably be a tough situation. But, you know, just, I mean, I've always thought Stan was a great coach. Like I said, I played for him. And mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that till you, till you guys said it today. I mean, I took my nap, of course, today. So I might have missed a lot of it. But um, I'll reach out to Stan and, um, you know, and, and have a talk with him, though. So. He's one of the guys who supported me when I had, you know, set out with my health issues, and he reached out to me and, you know, told me the most important thing is my health and myself and um, to get right, you know. So I'll, I'll reach out to Stan when I get a chance. I don't suppose you heard about the Saturday Night Live skit making fun of the other Cavaliers? No. Okay, let's check. Ty, Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com. There was a lot of conversation in the previous series about Kevin's offense, and obviously he's gotten it going there. But what have you seen from him on the defensive end in terms of progress from one series to this one? Um, like a lot of players, when you score in the basketball, you're better defensively. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's making shots. Um, he's playing with a real good pace. You know, he's playing with a real good pace offensively. You know, defensively, he got a few block shots, you know, at the basket, some deflections. And, um, you know, he's been good for us. And we got to continue to, you know, keep going to him, um, keep moving him around, you know, making Valanciunas and Ibaka play in situations they're not comfortable playing in. So Kev's been doing a really good job just changing his pace and speeds.